These are the Ergosonic Marching Bass Drums, the weirdest looking bass drums I have ever seen. Actually, second weirdest. The Vox Melting Bass Drum. That is a little bit weirder, I think. But I am now the proud owner of a set of four of these bass drums, because ten marching bass drums, that is apparently not enough for me. It looks like these drums went into the operating room and got sliced in half and then Frankensteined back together backwards to create a 45 degree bend in the drum. So why the heck would anybody do this to a perfectly good bass drum? Well, for one, this turns the horizontal playing surface of a marching bass drum into a vertical surface, making it easier to play. This also makes the drum easier to march since it's lower and you can see over it. And according to all this data from the website, the resonating chambers there are larger, giving the drum a wider range of tuning options. So will these drums replace marching bass drums as we know it? Well, let's test them out and find out ourselves. is rattling on this. That's it, the rim saver loose. And also these drums have probably not been tuned in years. These are almost the same pitch. <laughs> and this one also has a, a busted head. There's a gigantic gash here. So I'll have to change that. And we're gonna tune these all up to make them sound beautiful. Drum heads make excellent frisbees. And yeah, I have a trampoline because I am a hip, cool 35 year old guy. And I also started diving again, so I need to practice for that. So the most obvious advantage to this drum is that it is a lot easier to march than a regular marching bass drum because, well, you can see over it. So now it is time to do the test, all right? We got the Ergosonic drums and the regular marching bass drums out here. I retuned all my marching bass drums to match the Ergosonic drums. Each of these drums are the same size. We have the 14s, the 18s, 22s, and 24s. So I'm definitely gonna have to go off of the sound of the video for this because to me, from my perspective, the Ergosonic sounds way, way louder. And that's just because the design of the drum is pushing the sound right up into my face. Whereas the regular marching bass drum, the sound travels away from me. So it's pretty impossible for me to tell right there. But let's see how each of these bass lines sounds all together. And by all together, I mean edited all together.
very different sounds there. Hopefully you are listening with good enough speakers so you can tell. I do like how on the Ergosonic drums, it keeps your hands even when transitioning from right to left. On a marching bass drum, you can easily tell the difference from when you switch from one hand to the other. And I mean, that's just the nature of the instrument. But personally, I prefer the sound of the regular marching bass drums here. And that is because there is more articulation in every note, which makes it a lot easier to hear, especially the fast notes, the three and four runs. But wait one second. On the website, they have this pamphlet that says a porthole drum head can be used to get a more articulate sound. And well, unfortunately, I don't have any of those kind of heads. In fact, I don't think anybody makes a 14 inch porthole resonating bass drum head. The smallest I could find is 18 inches. You'd have to do some kind of crazy R David R DIY hack to make that happen. But I have an even better idea. I am just going to straight up take off the resonating head completely because yeah, we don't need to play on that side. And now we will have maximum articulation. Hopefully let's find out. actually sounded really good. Definitely a lot more clarity in all those fast notes. But I think we need to do one more choppier lick to really compare all three of these bass drum combinations for science. Yo, I actually really like the sound of the headless ergosonic drums. The hand-to-hands, -hand, like, all those really fast runs are very, very clear and even. And the tone of the drum is still quite good as well, even with that one head knot on there. I think the headless drums are going to get first place in this sound test. But there is still one more test I want to do with these drums. I played my mega marching drum set recently in the WGI solo contest, and I also used this setup at Minicore Championships last summer, which I plan to do again this year. So let's see how the ergosonic drums sound in this context.
Hmm, very interesting. Once again, I do think that the normal bass drums and the headless ergosonic drums, I think they both sound better than the regular ergosonic drums with a resonant head. And between those two, I think it's pretty close, but I kind of like the sound of the normal bass drums a little bit better here. Although I did notice after listening to it a few times that the tuning of the headless drums was kind of a lot lower than the other drums. That's because there's been a lot of taking off and putting back on of drum heads in this video, so the tuning got a little bit wonky as we went on. So I will say I think they might have sounded better if I tuned them up a little bit higher there. But visually speaking, I think the headless drums, they look pretty freaking cool in this setup. I think the weirdness of those drums, it just adds to the wow factor of what's going on. And I am all about that wow factor. That is kind of making me want to use these drums when I play this setup next time. But back to the main question at hand, will the Ergosonic drums take over marching bass drums as we know it? I know I said I like the sounds of the headless drums better than the normal bass drums, but I don't think they are going to replace the standard traditional bass drum. And that's because a big part of bass drumming is the challenge of playing on the horizontal surface. And I feel like if you take that away, then bass drumming, it just kind of loses its identity. The ergosonic drums, they still can be a cool effect if it makes sense for a part of your show. RCC 2009 comes to mind where the bass drums played on flats for a little bit. Or Sparkman High School had that crazy flub feature a couple of years ago. But having your bass line play on ergosonic drums all the time, I I, dude, I, I don't know about that. <laughs> the only group I've ever seen do that is Everett High School about 10 years ago. I don't know, it just seems to me like the priority with doing that is to train your bass drummers to become better snare and tenor drummers next year, rather than just making them great bass drummers. Because if you have a student that wants to march bass drum later on in a college or a drum corps, then they are at a serious disadvantage by never having played a traditional bass drum. And I have the exact same thought process when it comes to traditional traditional grip snare versus match grip snare, like you're setting people up better for the future by teaching them traditional. I guess that's a topic for another video though. Call me old fashioned, I guess, but I think that bass drums should be played the traditional way, horizontally. Even though I think the headless ergosonics sound better, so nothing makes sense. If you would like to see me review some more crazy drum products, you can click on this video right here, and have a good morning.